Okay, so let's continue with the, the page rank, right? So um, let me just very briefly remind you we had a few ideas related, uh, related to the page rank. Uh, first idea is uh, uh, that uh, uh, page rank uh, should be defined globally. And this is actually the key for success of page rank to this feature. What do we mean by global definition? <coughs> Excuse me, we mean that uh, you cannot alter significantly the page rank by changing at will any reasonable size collection of uh, documents, right? You cannot manipulate the page rank by building some uh, a uh, bogus collection of web pages and making some link structure. It has to be completely uh, robust. It has to be resilient to this kind of spamming. And uh, the way to do that uh, is that the page rank of each page should depend on page ranks of absolutely all other uh, web pages on the web. Right? So this is what we mean by global, because if page rank of any document uh, depends on the page ranks on all other documents, uh, then obviously <coughs> you cannot fiddle with uh, a relative minuscule subset, maybe of millions page, uh, pages, right? Uh, in the, which is really small in in terms of uh, hundreds of billions of pages that are out there, you should not be able to alter significantly uh, the, the ranking of uh, a particular web page. And one way how to accomplish this, uh, and it's actually uh, a, uh, uh, a pretty old uh, idea that was used in information retrieval, uh, is uh, that you should make a page rank of a page P be equal to the weighted average over all pages PI that point to P of the ranks of uh, PI, rank of PI divided by the number of outgoing links uh, on uh, Pi. So sharp pi equals the, uh, the number of uh, outgoing uh, links on uh, uh, pi. So geometrically, <coughs> here is what this looks like. This is your web page p, and you have uh, links on other uh, web pages say P1, uh, P2, uh, and say P3, and of course uh, uh, P1 might point out, uh, point to several other pages and the same uh, uh, here, right? Um, so <coughs> the page rank of uh, this web page should be weighted average of the page ranks of pages that point to it prorated by, um, uh, by the number of outgoing links. So you can think about, uh, you can think in, about this as a recommender system. This web page recommends that web page. Uh, so in a sense, uh, the credibility of P1 is conferred to the credibility, quote unquote, uh, for the quality of P2. But every, uh, to avoid kind of inflation, right, um, every web page to which P1 points 
gets the fraction, the corresponding fraction. So here would be, for example, one third if P1 has uh, uh, three outgoing links. Right here it would be one fifth of rho of P2. Here it will be one third of uh, rho of P1. Right? And so now the idea is uh, uh, a, a, a web page will have high rank if it's pointed at by web pages that they themselves have high rank and, that's, and that are quite discriminating uh, to what, how many web pages they recommend. So this has to be large and this has to be reasonably small so that the contribution of uh, this uh, uh, web page uh, to the rank of P is large. So remember this notation uh, means uh, uh, PI has an outgoing link to the uh, uh, to web page B, right? So that's the fundamental idea because it assures us that the high ranking, that the only pages who are pointed at by valuable pages that are kind of not excessively generous what they recommend, uh, only in that case the rank of the web page will be large. Now notice this is not a recipe how to compute rho p, the rank of p, because the rank appears both in the left and on the right, right? You have to know what rows are on these pages in order to compute rho, so it's a circular definition, right? So this is only uh, what is usually called an implicit rather than explicit definition, Namely, it's a condition what rho should satisfy to have this nice property, right, intuitive property. Okay, so it's just a condition. It doesn't tell us uh, uh, how to compute it. Okay. Uh, so, this, this, so this is a set of equations, uh, uh, linear equations. Uh, in, in the ranks, right? Maybe it's easier, uh, it would have been better uh, because this, well, I guess it's okay. I thought maybe writing it, uh, okay, so we can say uh, let rho i be a rank of page b i. So this would uh, uh, read then uh, rho j is equal to the sum of rho i over uh, sharp i, right? So rho i is the rank <coughs> of page pi, and uh, sharp i is the number of outgoing links of uh, uh, pi. So now you can see this is really a system of linear equations because these are just constant. They are numbers how many uh, outgoing links uh, page pi uh, has, right? <coughs> and so this is just a system of linear equations, uh, right? And uh, we now want to figure out uh, does this system actually have a solution? Is there a solution? Is there other values for all the rho i's that make all of the equations true? And unfortunately, this is not the case, right? So we have to tweak our definition. But whenever you tweak a definition, you are running the risk that the uh, heuristics behind the definition will be badly damaged. And so the uh, uh, entity that you are defining will no longer capture uh, the content, uh, uh, the idea that you want to uh, 
codify in the system. And the beautiful thing about PageRank is that this is tweaked in a way so the tweak itself has a perfectly clear uh, justification and makes actually uh, this analysis even more credible. Um, so, uh, so let us first write this, uh, how do we usually represent large systems of linear equations? Uh, what's the most compact representation of a system of linear equations? The matrix. Matrix representation, exactly. <laughs> let's see what does, uh, what this says, and let's see what this quantity is. Uh, well, let us uh, consider the following matrix, uh, right? The matrix looks like this. Here uh, we have pages, uh, uh, say, uh, P, uh, J. Uh, here uh, we will have also uh, the, the indices of the pages P, I. And uh, the entries in this uh, row are all zeros uh, except uh, they are 1 over uh, sharp uh, uh, pj, right? Um, and then zeros again, and then again 1 over uh, 1 over sharp pj, and then zeros, where this is non-zero, so in this matrix uh, we have, uh, let's call this matrix G0, uh, we have, um, maybe I should put, uh, uh, I should put zero on top, uh, and then we have G, uh, I, G, say J, I is equal to one, over uh, sharp uh, pj, um, uh, just in case, uh, um, if and only if, uh, well, it's equal to this, if pj points to pi and uh, uh, zero otherwise. Right? So in this row that corresponds to web page PJ, you have zeros everywhere except for pages so that PJ points has an outgoing link. To, so this is PI, here is a, a PK. So uh, for example, if, uh, the, the, if there are only two of them, right? Oh, I should have gone to the gym more often. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. no, it wouldn't help even if I went to the gym. <laughs> no, whenever my wife told me I should go to the gym. Um, so, can you tilt it all? Good. <laughs> so, for example, if, uh, um, uh, say, P, uh, PJ only has outgoing links uh, to PI, and uh, PJ has outgoing links to PK, then in this matrix, right, uh, where the row for PJ is, uh, we will have zeros everywhere except one half at uh, PI and uh, one half at PK. Right, because there are only two pages, PI and PK, to which PJ points. Uh, so the number of outgoing links is two. So uh, this means uh, that uh, uh, this will be one half and this will be one half. Okay, so now what we are going to do is uh, um, 
what we are going to do is the following. Uh, we are going to represent, okay, I can erase this because it's, uh, uh, you know what this stands for, and it's really uh, inconvenient to write on such a low board. Okay. Uh, so uh, the uh, ranks uh, row of uh, pi, we will make them into a vector. Vectors in linear algebra are most uh, frequently and uh, most commonly represented as columns, right? So uh, we will have a vector, uh, say, r, that looks like this. It is, uh, say, uh, row 1, row 2, uh, row uh, n, all the way to up to row capital N, uh, where, um, uh, what is capital N? Number of, pages. Number of pages on the web. On the web. Right. So now, it's very easy to represent this using this matrix, because this simply says that vector R is, um, and we will actually, okay, so there is a very good reason why we transpose it. So we write it now, this will become a raw vector. Uh, this will become clear why this is good only if you read the, the extended part that shows, uh, the, uh, that gives the proof uh, why uh, the ranks are well defined. But you can trust me, it's good to do it in this way. And this is how Google people did it. So this simply says uh, that this is equal to RT. So this is transpose. So R transpose is uh, of R be this uh, matrix or a vector times the matrix G0. So because if you write it, uh, what it means, so here is row, uh, uh, row 1, row 2, here is uh, row j, and so forth, equals, and then here you have the very same thing, row 1, row 2, and then you have somewhere here row i, and then somewhere here you have uh, a row k, and so on, and then uh, here you will have this matrix that is mostly zeros, Except, say, for a row, for a, a page J. Uh, so if this is the row for page J, it will be zero everywhere except one over uh, the number of outgoing links of J. Let's write it like this. I'm kind of a bit abusing notation. Someone, sometimes I'll write this. Sometimes I write that without p, but you know what this means. In both cases, it's just the number of outgoing links. Why is this so? Well, jth element, how do you get it? Well, you get it when you multiply this, right? Uh, if you multiply this vector with this matrix, what do you have? Uh, row 1 will multiply this entry, row 2 will multiply this entry, and so forth. So the jth entry will be precisely equal, you will obtain it when you multiply, um, uh, when you uh, multiply the, uh, with the, all of the, so if now 
Okay, let me put this is say Shreya. Ah, okay, so you see what is happening simply when you go with this vector through this and you take the j column, you will get non zero entries only at the point. So let's, uh, let's do it, uh, say, uh, for pi. So, i uh, entry, you will take the i column here, you multiply it with this vector. What happens? All the rows get killed by the zeros. You will select only rows, row i, row, or say uh, uh, row j, uh, rows j, that point, that correspond to pages that point to this web page. Right? Because among all these entries, non zero uh, will be, so say this is number of uh, some pl, if this corresponds to row pl, right? When you multiply this uh, row vector by the column that corresponds to pi, all will be zero except those that point to pi, and they will be multiplied by this factor of number of outgoing, uh, uh, outgoing links of, of that matrix. So do you see? that this uh, simply is uh, the result of multiplying uh, this vector with the uh, corresponding uh, column, with the jade column of the matrix, right? So that's, that's uh, you, you have this uh, nicely written in the notes, but you can see when I multiply this with this, uh, 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 what will I get for row i? Let's see here. For row i, what will I get for row i? Well, I will get only rows of matrices that point to pi, right? Only these entries will not kill the corresponding rows, so the row will be exactly uh, multiplied by the outgo number of outgoing uh, links of that web page. So, what we are, so this is to say, uh, right? This is to say, my cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> are you a director or are you not a director? <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, um, so, so what we are essentially looking, we are looking for a vector uh, rho or r, however you want to call it, uh, such that uh, it is uh, the fixed point uh, of this matrix G0. Because look what it says. Uh, it says, if I take my vector rho, multiply it with a matrix G0, I should get back my vector rho. So this says rho or vector uh, rho is the fixed or is a fixed point of the linear mapping uh, defined by by uh, G0, right? And this will be a repeating theme of this course because as you will see, uh, the problem that I told you about uh, determining the, what, with what power your cell phone should radiate, uh, uh, the problem of uh, aggregating uh, data from uh, inconsistent sensor readings, they will all be fixed points uh, of mappings, uh, except that in this particular case, it's a particularly si simple mapping because it's just multiplication of a vector by a matrix, thus a linear mapping. So also in other um, 
terminology. Uh, I'll write this uh, in a little bit silly form, namely I'll write one time, well, I'll write it like this. Uh, uh, I will write it as uh, rho times g equal one times uh, rho. How do we call uh, values that uh, have the property that for some vector this happens? Uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this means uh, one should be an eigen value of uh, uh, g, g0, um, and uh, 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 rho is uh, an eigenvector uh, which corresponds uh, Uh, to um, uh, to one, right? Uh, in general, um, and this is a left eigenvector. In general, eigenvector, I mean, eigenvalues can be arbitrarily complex numbers, uh, and uh, uh, this is the, so to speak, a general definition of the left. Uh, eigenvector because it multiplies the matrix from the left. Of course, the right eigenvector is uh, defined uh, in an analogous way, just in the opposite uh, direction. It would be g times rho, and then rho would have to be a color vector. Okay, but the question now is, uh, uh, why should be why should one be an eigenvalue for G? No apparent reason. And then, uh, on top of it, uh, not only that we are looking for eigenvectors, but we want to have unique eigenvectors. And in fact, for a particular eigenvalue, there can be several linearly independent, in fact, mutually orthogonal eigenvectors. Uh, the number of, eigen, of linearly dependent uh, eigenvectors is called the geometric uh, multiplicity of that um, eigenvalue. Okay, so no good reason to believe that uh, this holds, that there is a row that satisfies this, and even less that such a row is unique. And remember, for page rank, it is crucial that page rank is uniquely determined so that there is no arbitrariness of how you assign ranks. If there can be two incompatible um, uh, page rank vectors, uh, it might happen that the rank of a website for one row is larger uh, than the rank of another website, and if these are e-commerce websites, they will be extremely unhappy if their uh, ranks are break, broken, the, you know, if the decision had any level of arbitrariness, uh, right? So, of course, Google not only makes sure that their page rank is uh, not arbitrary, but they also make sure that it is skewed uh, so that it promotes their own business, right? <coughs> but this goes beyond the uh, algorithm design. Okay, yeah. Uh, so how do we fix this uh, problem? Uh, now, uh, there is another um, interpretation of these uh, ranks. Uh, let's assume that uh, there exists a solution for this equation. Obviously, any multiple 
of this uh, vector will be also a solution because if you multiply it with a constant, both sides, nothing will change, all right? So you can choose the roles so that they sum up to one, right? And of course, we are looking for positive vectors, vectors whose all uh, uh, coordinates are uh, non-negative. Uh, so if this is so, then this equation has a very strong probabilistic explanation, right? So let's look again. Um, if you interpret uh, uh, the Rolls uh, as probabilities, uh, then what is, uh, you see, if uh, rho of pi is uh, interpreted as uh, the probability that uh, uh, surfer or that our uh, random surfer uh, visits uh, pi say uh, after long surfing we uh, randomly stop it and look at what page we are and then we can assign for to each web page the probability that uh, when surfing stopped, uh, I was exactly there. So notice now what this equation uh, stands for. Rho of P is equal sum to the rho of Pi divided by the number of outgoing lanes of uh, uh, web page Pi. In order to come here, the only way to come here, if it's not from the, at the very start of something, is to visit one of these web pages uh, and then click on the link uh, that leads to that web page. So probability to come here will be equal probability to come here divided by the number of outgoing links. Because if I am here, there is equal probability that I will click uh, anywhere, so probability to actually make the transition will be precisely this, and this will be sum, so rho of p will be simply sum of probability to end up here and then move here, plus probability to reach this point and then go here, plus probability to reach uh, that point and then come here. So there is a very strong kind of probabilistic uh, uh, probabilistic explanation of what these uh, equations uh, stand for. So, but you remember the model with uh, random surfing had uh, a serious uh, drawback, right? Because uh, what was the drawback? The drawback is what if I end up on a dangling web page that doesn't have, uh, sorry, uh, algorithms are very hot topics, so I have to take my shirt out um, and maybe roll my sleeves. Uh, so, uh, what was I uh, telling you? Uh, so the problem was, uh, what happens uh, if uh, I hit um, a web page without outgoing links? Well, we remedy this by whenever you end up at a web page with no outgoing links, you simply uh, jump to a randomly chosen page on internet with equal probability, right? So, right, um, here, uh, this, if you interpret this as a probability pj, then with this probability, I'll go to a uh, uh, web page pi, but I can hit a row of a dangling web page that are 
all the zeros and lo and behold, this is no longer, um, well, you know, it means I'm stuck here because probability to go to any other web page is zero. And we remedy this uh, by uh, replacing uh, all the zeros uh, uh, with one over n. So in wherever I have zero, I'll have one over n, one over n, and then somewhere here, um, I will have um, a, a row of uh, uh, p, uh, p, sorry, I will have not row of p, I, I will have one over um, n, so this is my time with web page, 1 over n, 1 over n, and then here I'll have zeros, and then here 1 over uh, number of pi, and then zero zeros, 1 over number of outgoing links of pi. So matrix uh, G1, this we will call <coughs> matrix G1, Sorry? But why is it in higher row just 1 over n? Why is it? Why is it in higher row um, to be 1 over n? Okay, that's a very good question. Why is it an entire uh, row 1 over uh, uh, pj? You see, we want to interpret this as probabilities. Uh, we want to say that uh, if you are at a web page pi, you see, if you are at the web page uh, pi and you have outgoing links uh, to web page pk uh, and web page pm and say web page uh, uh, pl, then we want to say that if a surfer is here, he will pick which link to click with equal probability, randomly. So uh, this, so okay, let me write it like this. Right now. PK1, PK2, and this will be P, uh, PKM, where K, uh, where M uh, is uh, equal uh, the number of outgoing links for PI